brilliant warm greening brilliant warm greetings my friend I'm purposefully not going to stop and do this over even though there was a mistake and that's because it's important it's important for us to actually as creators embrace mistakes and embrace imperfections and keep going now with that said of course as a creator I, I my rule that I follow is am I being respectful of other people's time and of my time am, am I being respectful of other people and me when I create these things and offer them up and I've come to find that trying to make something perfect <laughs> does not equal being respectful and in fact you could even make a counter argument to that which would look something like this by trying to make everything perfect and before we offer it up to one another that that's actually a disservice to each other what do you think about that okay i started this video with one plan in mind and i can feel another plan morphing right in this moment and so i'm going to go with that I want to talk to you about this idea of emergent facilitation. Emergent facilitation is where you are facilitating something, you're teaching something, you're sharing something, but you are leaning more into the unknown than you are anchored in the known. And, I, and there's a lot of subtlety to this, so I want to take a few minutes and outline it and I invite you to play with this if you're a facilitator, if you're a teacher. And even if you're not officially, you know, you don't offer courses, you don't do these kinds of things, but you're a parent or you find yourself in friend dynamics where people are asking you for guidance, for suggestions, you can utilize these same techniques in those, um, in those circumstances as well. So what emergent means is that which is on the edge and it is making itself known from the previously unknown in real time before your eyes. So it's, something is actually unfolding and growing. So a good concrete example would be underneath the ground in the very, very early spring, underneath the ground there's all this activity of plants that are making their way to the surface. The plants exist even though we can't see them. And they actually exist in the template of their final form. And that's through their genetics, just like with us. Uh, the, you know, we become ourselves in utero because of genetic mandates, if you will. So underneath the surface is this plant that already has a template of what it's going to become. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> But while it's under the ground, I do that when I get excited. I kind of choke on my own saliva. When it's under the ground, <clears throat> it, is, it has not yet become manifest or evident to our eyes. As it starts to push its way up from the ground, it becomes emergent to us. The first little green thing to stick its way out of the ground, that's the emergent tip of the plant. And even if, say, you don't know plants, and so you, don't, you can't just identify what that plant is, the, known, the, the plant already knows what it's going to become, even before we know what it's going to become. This is really important, we with our eyeballs, if we don't know the plant. So <clears throat> us identifying this little shoot that's coming out of the ground is us identifying emergent uh, actuality, the emergence of the plant. If you or I were uh, a plant specialist, you know, we had a lot of experience with this. We knew the cycles, the growing seasons. We knew where the things in our garden tend to pop up when it's time. Then we might be able to say, come very, very early before spring. Oh, right, right here, right below the ground, the crocuses are going to pop their heads and you can kind of feel it and anticipate it. All of what I just shared with you applies to emergent facilitation. With emergent facilitation, we are identifying what is popping up just as it's popping up, but we are also, we are also 
holding the knowing of what's possible within any container. So that's likened to the gardener knowing that the crocuses are going to pop up in this particular area, right? So how this looks for me as a facilitator, and I've been facilitating a long time, over 30 years now, I've been facilitating in some capacity or another. Uh, and I, it, it's, it's an area of just endless curiosity and endless delight for me. And, and it hasn't always been easy. I've, I've experienced some real profound soulful and spiritual development through the process of facilitations and all that it brings up, the hard parts, the easy parts and everything in between. So as a facilitator who's been doing this a long time, like a gardener who's been gardening a long time, when I create containers, which are my courses and my various offerings, my knowing is that there is there's something that I can name that will pop up in that container, like the crocuses in a certain area of the garden. And it might be something like uh, a, a transformation and a healing in relationship to self-trust, uh, a transformation and a healing in relationship to abundance, etc., depending on what my offering is. But, and I have a basic outline of what I want to share. I am, I am embodying and being a living representation of the intention for that container. It's really important and high level stuff. I'm embodying the intention. I'm embodying and modeling the intention for that container. And by doing that, I am in deep trusting union and communion not only with the group itself but with what it is that wants to come through us in the group <laughs> and come up through us from the group and then from there I back off I relax it's like I have my outline I know in general what I want to say I deeply trust in this container and the emergent potential of this container and the intention and by the way that that's something that's developed over time, but the earlier you can practice this, the better. And the more you can practice what I'm talking about, the better. And then what I'm doing when I'm facilitating and teaching, say I'm talking about an essential oil, is that I'm actually paying attention to what's bubbling up to the surface in the community, in that gathering. And this is true whether I'm delivering something online and I can't even see the people, or I'm delivering something online and I can see the people, or I'm in person and I can see the people. It doesn't matter. My attention is on what's bubbling up kind of in the air or in the container or in the field of the group while I'm also riffing or sharing or describing uh, around a particular topic. What this does is it makes the experience a living experience. And, and living experiences in terms of classes and workshops and engagements are so much more interesting, so much more satisfying for, for everyone involved, for everyone involved. I honestly can't even go to workshops or seminars anymore that, that are led by people who don't have some measure of tune in to emergent facilitation because it feels dead and flat and I just want to fall asleep. You can tell when a teacher or facilitator or yourself is facilitating from an emergent, an emergent place because there's something as if they're leaning in and both hearing and receiving and so it's like something in them is coming up to meet something at the edge of awareness and they're coming together and articulating through that person's mouth. This is how I operate probably 95% of the time when I'm facilitating. It doesn't mean that I don't stop to look at notes or again have outline and take notes before I, before I give a talk, but it does mean that I implicitly trust first and foremost, to give my attention to what's emergent. I did it right now with this video. This is a prime example. I have had something completely different planned when I started recording this. I trusted what was unfolding in real time. And I leaned in to this topic that wanted to be delivered. This, this is pretty, pretty radical emergent facilitation right now in this moment. 
don't be afraid of pausing when you uh, facilitate or when you share, when you're in a conversation with a loved one. It's okay to stop. It's okay to close your eyes. It's okay to say, I'm going to take a moment. And I will say particularly for empathic individuals, sensitive individuals who are really used to tuning into other people's experience, it becomes all the more important for you to pause regularly and just tune in to yourself. What's emerging in you right now? Let's do this together right now. What's emerging in you right now? What's bubbling to the surface of you right now? What questions can you feel the shape of right now? Okay, this was delightful. If you enjoyed this video, please do give the, the like, the thumbs up, and you can share it with others. And be willing to get uncomfortable. Be willing to get uncomfortable to tap into a deeper level of trust and flow within your communication, within your facilitation, within your sharing and engaging with loved ones. It's so, so worth it. And it really is a catalyst for greater intimacy. From my heart to yours, and until next time.